welcome to another Record Women, where over the next 20 minutes we'll feature issues that are important to you. We'll also have the latest showbiz news, fashion headlines and celeb interviews. Here's what's coming up on today's programme. Carla catches up with Michelle McManus ahead of her One Woman show. There's makeup advice for the mother of the bride. Celebrity chef Phil Vickery cooks up a tasty treat and I chat to Stuart Clark as he stars in hit musical Ghost. First on the show, singer and TV presenter Michelle McManus recently took the Edinburgh Festival by storm with her one woman show. Well, now the former Pop Idol winner is bringing it to Glasgow. Carla went to meet her. I'm joined today by TV presenter and singer Michelle McManus who is about to do a second run of Michelle McManus at the musicals. Are you looking forward to it, Michelle? Uh, Carla, I'm so excited. I cannot believe the success of this show. It was literally back in April this year over a bottle of wine, as all my <laughs> major decisions in life involve a bottle of wine. And I was sitting with a couple of guys that own the venue in Edinburgh, and we were kind of drunk and just said, uh, oh, wouldn't it be great if you did something at the festival? And we were talking about our love of musicals because Lee Miz had just done so well, and the Oscars this year were all themed around musicals. and. We said, why don't we do a show where you sing and all the kind of greatest hits from the musicals? And we really only planned to do one night and ended up having a sellout run of nine shows um, and getting, you know, three or four five star reviews as a result. And I'm still kind of pinching myself how all this happened over one bottle of Pina Gris show, you know? So it's to, to be in the position now where there's such a high demand for it that I'm having to do a further three nights in Glasgow is a lovely position to be in. And you'll be in Glasgow at the Shed at the end of October? Uh, the Shed have got what's known as Live uh, live at the Shed running every Saturday. So it's, it's, the top floor has really turned itself into a live performance venue. Yeah. So because it was around the corner from me, what the, I love what they've done with that space. And it's about 100, 120 seater. So I thought, do you know, it suits my show because it's just me on stage. And I think for the show that we had in Edinburgh, I don't really know if it would translate properly in a huge big theatre. I think you'd need to add backing dancers, you'd need to add uh, a full band on stage, and that's definitely something that's planned for next year. But to take that show in its entirety, it needs to go into a kind of small, intimate venue, and The Shade just kind of ticks every box for that. Excellent, and what can we expect from the show? Um, the show really is about, it's my 10 year anniversary this year, from yes. Pop Idol, you know, I don't <laughs> like to talk about it, but I won Pop Idol. But, um, <laughs> It's my 10 year anniversary this year and I'm quite depressed that I'm old enough to have a 10 year anniversary at anything. So <laughs> it's really just a wee look back at my journey over the last 10 years. It's quite self deprecating, you know, I come out with these big feathers on. I'm this kind of out of shape, kind of has been diva that never quite made it onto the West End stage. So instead I'm in this attic bar of the shade singing the songs and it's, I mean, it's very tongue in cheek and light hearted, but it's, there's lots of lovely wee kind of funny antidotes all the way through. You know, I talk about famous people that I've met and things that have happened to me, but I use the songs mm -hmm. to kind of tie it all together. Um, it's only, you know, an hour and a half long, um, but it's a real feel good kind of sing along. It's, it's basically a musical karaoke night. Michelle's show is definitely one to go and see. Now, if you're going to become the mother of the bride soon, you'll want to look your best for your daughter's big day. Here's some advice on how to get your makeup just right. Today we are focusing on Mother of the Bride makeup and the first thing we're going to use is under eye concealer. This product is really going to help lighten under the eyes um, and just take away any darkness or shadows. The best way to apply this is using your ring finger. The warmth of your finger will really just blend that concealer really well into the skin. So that's your under eye concealing done and as you can see that's really lifted and brightened un underneath Margaret's eyes. So now the next product we're going to look at is foundation. When looking for a foundation, you want to be looking for anything that's light reflective, lumin luminous, radiance, because that, that's what's really going to give you a nice youthful glow. Now we really want to start to add some colour to the skin. So the next product we're going to be using is a bronzing powder. A bronzing powder is fantastic to really warm up your complexion and give a nice healthy sun-kissed glow to your skin. So you're just loading your brush tapping off any excess and just using light swirling motion. You're just applying this all over the face. Again, working down and out the way. If you are using bronzing powder, you need to make sure the face and neck blend in. So I would recommend taking the bronzer down the neck as well as the face. Going back to luminosity and glow, today I'm going to be using a cream blusher and then taking your foundation brush 
apply a little bit to the tip of it. This product you're wanting to apply to the apple of the cheek and you're just blending very lightly out towards the hairline. There shouldn't be any harsh lines or edges to your blusher. It should just seamlessly blend into the skin. And you can see already Margaret's skin is really glowing and full of color. And just to set that cream blusher, I would advise you use a little bit of a powder blusher in the same color which will just really set that and make it last all day, which is very important. So now we're going to move on to lips. For your lip color, I would recommend you choose something with a good depth and brightness to it. If you go too pale, you're not going to get that nice uplifting effect from it. And also for photographs, you want something that is really going to attract the camera. If it's too pale, it's just going to look a bit insipid on your lip. So now we want to start to add some eye makeup onto Margaret to really highlight her lovely eyes. So the first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of eyebrow makeup. Eyebrows are very, very important because they frame the eye. So a lot of people can forget about them, but they are important. So just putting a little bit on your brush, you're just following the natural arch of the eyebrow. The eyeshadow color needs to be very close to the actual color of your eyebrow. So it blends in, it blends in seamlessly to the hair and you can see already the difference between each eye. We're now going to use an, a light eye colour base which goes all over the lid and you're, you would take it right up to just underneath it, the brow bone and this is really going to open the eye, the eye up and create a lot of brightness around the eye area. This is a cream eyeshadow I'm using today. I've gone for a, a fairly light eyeshadow colour because you want to keep it light and fresh and natural. Right, so the next thing we want to do is to add a little bit of definition to Margaret's eye. And the key product to do this is with eyeliner. So I'm just going to slightly dampen the tip of the brush with some water. And then take your eyeshadow. This brush is slightly angled, so it makes it nice and easy to follow the natural line of the eye. And you're just applying the shadow to the tip of the brush. And then working very closely to Margaret's lash line, we're just going to lightly press that along. And the good thing with powder is if you do make a mistake, you can easily just smudge it back into the eye. I've chosen a chocolate brown colour, which is much softer than black, which I would recommend because I think black would look a bit harsh. So you can see instantly that that's really lifted Margaret's eye, eye and made it much bigger and wider. Right, so we're now going to finish that look with a nice coat of mascara. For the wedding day, I would be recommending a waterproof mascara, just in case there are any tears. And you just want to wiggle your brush as close to the root as you can get it, working up and out through the top of the lash. Another top tip would be to use eyelash curlers before you actually apply your mascara. Again, this will really add some more volume and lift to, to the lash and give that nice wide eye look. And just on Margaret, I'm just going to apply a little bit of the liner I've used on top, just a little bit on the outer corner underneath this will give the eye a little bit more definition. So the last thing I'm going to apply to Margaret today would be a highlighter. A highlighter, again, going back to luminosity and radiance. This is going to be a lovely finishing product just to really highlight Margaret's skin. That's our makeup completed. Everything else really should stay in place all day. Some great makeup tips there. Well, this is the part of the show where Carla chooses her woman of the week. Who's the candidate this time around, Carla? This week, Lindsay, we have gone for Kristen Helenga. Because October is Breast Cancer yeah. Awareness Month, we chose Kristen because Kristen herself was diagnosed with breast cancer at the very young age of 23. Very sad news, yeah, but uh -huh. she's turned things around, She's turned she? things around. Kristen has launched charity Copperfield, which is based on breast awareness. Mm -hmm. She wants to encourage young men and women to check their breasts and if they spot anything wrong, to get to the doctor straight away. Um, early, like, early detection is obviously yeah, the best key, way. Yeah. Um, for Kristen, her cancer has spread to her spine. She's at stage four now, but she's nothing stopping her. She's absolutely fabulous. and. She's saving lives with Copperfield, yeah. so for that, Kristen is definitely a worthy woman of the week. She certainly is. Well, thank you very much for the moment, Carla. Now, it's time for celebrity chef Phil Vickery to tease those taste buds. Here's a simple but delicious recipe. 
Here's a lovely way to use turkey mince in a turkey turnover with some fruit and spices. Yeah, kids love them in their lunch boxes, plus they're a great way to use up leftovers from your Sunday roast, and so it saves you time and money as well. Yeah, they're really easy to make. Right, what you're gonna need is turkey mince, mayonnaise, any dried fruit, but I'm using cranberries and apricots today, a bit of garlic, some dried breadcrumbs, egg, oregano, onion, sesame seeds, egg and a little bit of salt and a bit of pastry. Right, first thing you need to do is soften your onions. Now we've done this beforehand. One large onion or two small onions with a couple of cloves of garlic. Cooked for about five minutes. Do you need to wait for them to cool down before uh, you... No, you can put it in straight away. A couple of tablespoons of mayonnaise into there. Then we're going to add a bit of fruit. As I said, any fruit will do, but I'm using cranberries today. I do add a bit of oregano as well. I think it's a lovely background flavour. Then egg goes in there as well, a bit of binding. And then I've got a few breadcrumbs just to soak up the egg. Now I do cheat and use ready roll pastry, it's far easier. Cut these into six pieces. If the pastry is cold, it's much easier. And then we'll just egg one side of the square like that. It will stick nicely. I never would have thought to use turkey for lunch boxes. No, it does work, but you've got to be slightly careful with it. I mean, it does work in things like burgers, but encased in pastry, it stays really juicy and a little goes a long way. If you think there's, there's 500 grams there, and that'll make 12 at least. Money. Yeah, really economical. You know what, this is something you could, you could make with your kids. Yeah, exactly. They could choose their own flavours, especially fussy eaters, things they like to kind of be in control. Yeah, anything works, really. I mean, any fruit will work. I mean, I sometimes put, um, uh, a bit of chopped broccoli and cooked broccoli, okay. a few mushrooms, if your kids like mushrooms. Do you think that phyllo pastry would...? Um, <clears throat> phyllo pastry is good. You've got to be slightly careful with it because the trouble is that a lot of the times you have to put lots of butter on it. Oh, OK. Oh, stick it together. It does make it slightly unhealthy. That's my only concern. What I don't do is muck about things too much. So, again, a nice bit of beaten egg on top of there. And I want you to sprinkle yeah. on some sesame seeds and a little... Lovely sprinkle of sea salt. Again, not much. In the oven, 200 degrees, and they'll probably take around about 20, 22, 25 minutes, something like that. Really quick to make as well. Delicious. The best thing to do is to leave them for 10 minutes when they come out of the oven, because they're just too hot to eat. Mm, they smell delicious. They smell nice, don't they? Can I please eat one? <laughs> yes, you can. They look beautiful as well. Cut this one over here. Now look at that pastry. Mm. Look at that. Now, they might be quite hot, so be careful. Mm. Mm. They're absolutely delicious, and they'd be so great for the kids' lunch boxes when they're cold as yeah, well. Yeah, delicious. My kids would definitely eat this. And people tend to forget that turkey cuts are available all year round, aren't they? It's not just Christmas. Yes, absolutely. Look at that simple turkey turnovers. Some tasty tips from Phil there. Moving on to the world of showbiz now, and Ghost the Musical has been wowing the crowds at Glasgow's King's Theatre recently. Well, I caught up with Stuart Clark, who plays Sam, the role made famous by Patrick Swayze. Well, you join us here at the King's Theatre in Glasgow, where I'm joined with Stuart Clark. Hi. Now, obviously, you are in this iconic musical yeah, here. Yeah. Is there a lot of pressure taking part in something like that when there's been such an awesome film made? Yeah, I, th I think there is, obviously, because you know, in, especially in all the iconic scenes like the pottery and, and stuff like that, you know that the vast majority of the audience will have seen that and will have had that experience yeah. with the film. Um, but I think what's so great about our show is that, yeah, obviously it follows the same plot, it's got the same characters, but it's so different. Like, it's a completely different medium for one thing. In the theatre, you know, we've got the fantastic music written by Glenn Ballard and Dave Stewart. Uh, and these wonderful stage illusions make it, I don't know, it's a completely different beast. And I think the performances that myself and my, uh, my co-stars have created make it our, our version of Ghost. So hopefully the audience will come. Yeah, with obviously the film in mind, but once yeah. it gets going, they'll be like, oh, well, this is, this is a new version, this is our version of Ghost, and accept that. And did you really study Patrick Swayze in the film for your character, I or have... did you bring something to it yourself? No, I have an admission, I've never seen the film. You've never seen I've the never film? I've never seen the film, I know, oh this goodness. comes up a lot. And everyone's like, how can that be possible? Um, Maybe that's a good thing. Ma well, this is what I thought, I mean, obviously, once I got the role, I was like, well, sh should I watch it, should I, you know, get that impression? And I think it came on film four, and I made the conscious decision, no, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to... 
you know, create the role my own way. Um, and yeah, and I think that's, that has helped because obviously if you do see someone else doing it, you yeah. subconsciously take on things and which maybe are not useful because obviously in a film you have close up and mm -hmm. it's just, it's a different, it's a different way of performance. Were you really nervous bringing the whole Potter's Fuel scene and it is a very romantic, emotional show. Yeah, it is. You know what, that must have been a lot of pressure as well to get yeah, it right. But what's, what's quite nice I think in our show is that, um, the pottery wheel, it obviously it appears, but it appears with a twist. It's not done in completely the same way mm -hmm. as it is in the film. Um, so I think, yeah, that brings a little different twist to it and uh, it allows us again to bring our own, our own version of it. It is slightly diff different, this musical, because you do have a lot of special effects and illusions. You know, mm. not everyone at home yeah. knows about the illusions. How much have you had to take to do with that? Um, yeah, I'm obviously playing the ghost. I have quite a lot to do with all, <laughs> all these illusions. Um, you just put a sheet on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's great fun because obviously for a lot of them, like when I, when I walk through a door, um, that's probably, you know, our most spectacular one. You know, you can just sense the audience being like, mm -hmm. wow, is that happening? And you know, vast majority of the time, there'll be a lot of applause afterwards and stuff. Yeah. So it's it's a really good feeling to be involved with those, because you know you get you get the sense of this mystical effect that you're having on the audience. And I understand a lot of the audience they come and they cry buckets during yeah, that. Does that put yeah. you guys off? Oh at all my being goodness! On stage um, a little bit? Sometimes, I mean, the, the venue we were just at, there was uh, there was one performance where we got we got to the emotional climax of the show, and it's just this one woman, bless her, <laughs> just went. Boo! And you could just hear it throughout the entire theatre, everyone was sort of cracking up, but me and, me and Rebecca to be, you know, in the moment on stage, and it, yeah, that could be quite hard, but uh, now most of the time, you know, you get the sniffles and stuff, and you can, you can feel the audience is obviously in the moment with you, but no. Barring, barring bawling, it doesn't, it doesn't get too distracting. <laughs> now playing Sam Wheat, you obviously do have to keep yourself in shape. Is that hard when you're touring with a musical like Yeah, this? Um, it is. I mean, myself and Dave, um, Dave Roberts who plays Carl, um, we, both, we both have to get our tops off in the show. So <laughs> there's, um, there's a mutual sort of um, desire for both of us to go to the gym. So we, we're sort of gym buddies at the moment. Um, so that helps. But yeah, it's difficult obviously going to different venues and joining different yeah. gyms and it, it's difficult to keep a solid routine but we do what we can and I think you know hopefully we keep enough in shape to, <laughs> to, to do that. Now for your fans who are coming here to see the show it looks really glamorous being on tour being in a, a hit musical what's it like in reality you know touring? Um, I'll, I, I've, I mean this is my first time touring I'm still I'm still you know I'm 23 I've only just come out of uni it's my second job um, but yeah, I, I'm really enjoying it because you, you just get to see play, parts of the country that you've uh, you've never seen before. I've never been to Glasgow before, so this is my this is my first time experience of the city, and it's really it's really nice. And um, yeah, so I'd obviously lived. I, I realised I'd lived quite a sheltered life because there's so much <laughs> of the country I haven't seen. Um, but you get to see lots of things. You get different venues. Mm -hmm. There's different audiences. There's, there's an opening night every two or three weeks, which yeah. is really exciting. Um, so yeah, no, I mean. Obviously, it's difficult finding digs and you know finding yourself, yeah. you're finding your way around new cities. But in terms of the actual touring experience, it's a lot of fun. And finally, for people who haven't seen the show, what can they really expect? Because it is very different to your normal kind of yeah, musical. Yeah, it is. I mean, obviously, people who, who have seen the film will know it's it's a heart wrenching, emotional journey, but with a lot of laughs as well. Wendy May Brown, who plays Odame, is uh, is fantastic, and um, yeah, you get. The emotional journey, you get the fun, you get the visual effects, and you get some wonderful music. So it's really a, a great show to come and see. We're certainly looking forward to it. Thank you very cool. much for joining no us. No worries. The lovely Stuart Clark there. I think he needed a box to stand on to interview him. Carly yeah. was so tall. <laughs> there was a little bit of a height difference. It didn't look as if you bothered about the height no, difference. I wasn't bothered about the height <laughs> at all. Now this is the part of the show where we talk about the showbiz headlines. The award season is in full swing at the moment, isn't it? Yes, uh -huh. and this week seeing the Daily Mirror Pride of Britain Awards, which hosts so many amazing people, yeah. so many inspirational and emotional stories. You do cry watching it, Yeah, you cry you? The way all, all the way through it, should I say. Um, we had Scotland's own Martha Payne who was awarded for her charity work, Little Martha who I think is 11 or 12 11 years old. 11 years old yeah. and she's just changing the face uh -huh. of, of charities. Yeah, uh -huh. she's raised £130,000 for Mary's Meals mm -hmm. and amazing, so she's a deserving winner. And onto the, the red carpet. Which, let's face it, this is the part we do like to see. We like to see what celebrities are Yay, wearing. Yeah, uh -huh, definitely. And lots of golds and pinks and Sparkly sparkles. Numbers, yeah. yeah. Um, my favourite of the night was Pixie Lott, the singer, who turned up looking like Pixie-like. She's just so cute. She is lovely, <laughs> isn't she? She's um, so sweet. Yeah, in a gorgeous light pink gown. And it was a sheer princessy bottom. Although I don't know if 
princesses would wear see-through skirts. No. Depending on what kind of princess. <laughs> my favourite one tonight was Miley in class because she mm. really did rock that leopard print dress, she? looked didn't amazing, she as stunning. always. Yes, yeah, no, definitely. definitely. Well, moving on, of course, the two other women who are also stunning, Halle Berry and Alicia Dixon. Great news for them this yeah, week. Yeah, baby news this week for both of them. Halle Berry, you'll be glad to know, has finally had her baby. <sighs> goodness for that it seemed like the longest pregnancy ever yeah I'm not sure if it was because her pregnancy was covered and photographed so much that it seemed as if it was like <laughs> a year and um, Halle Berry gave birth to a little boy so mm -hmm. well done to her and she was seen out in West Hollywood the day before still looking absolutely amazing, amazing. yeah <laughs> and Alicia Dixon she took a bit longer to tell us she was six months pregnant yeah. when she announced it well, she, she seemed to have the quickest pregnancy in history <laughs> because she waited six months yeah. to to like divulge her happy news. Um, she was actually six months pregnant during the, the Britain's Got Talent live show. <laughs> and you wouldn't really know, would you? <laughs> no, she, because she just looked so amazing. Yeah, she looked fabulous. Um, so her and partner have welcomed Azura Sienna into into the world. So congratulations, yeah, congratulations to, them. to them. Not so good news for Tom Hanks this week. No, Tom Hanks has revealed that he has um, been diagnosed with type two diabetes. He says part of it could be blamed for his yo-yo dieting for film roles such yeah, as Castaway and things. Yeah, he does go up and down a lot. He yeah. transforms his body uh -huh. so many times. Yeah, he? so they think it could have played a part in that. So, But he's been in London this week for the um, promotion of Captain Phillips' his new film. Mm -hmm. And he says he feels fine and it's just part of his life now. So good on Tom for highlighting yeah, the he's condition awareness of for it, isn't he? because so many thousands of people in the UK suffer from it. So good on him. Yeah, good on him. Well, finally, we're going to be getting right behind our Scottish entry in the X Factor yes. this weekend. The live shows and Nicky McDonald. He's going to rock this competition. He totally he? is. He is just amazing. Sixteen-year-old Nicky from Motherwell has just come into the show and took everyone by surprise. He's just such an amazing mm. talent. I cried all the way through the judges' houses <laughs> last week when he broke down after after singing. Um, and uh, dare I say it, I think he might win. Do you think he could win yeah, this year? Uh -huh, wow, definitely. he is pretty awesome, isn't uh -huh. he? Let's face it. But there are some stiff competition yeah, there, isn't and there? we've also we've had two Scots in the X Factor. We've had Jade um, from Jade Richards from Fife as yeah, well. Who's got a record deal as well, which is yeah, fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. So yeah, they are doing Scotland's proud. <laughs> they certainly are. Well, Carly, thank you very much for joining me once again. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for here at Record Women TV. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.